Si. Okay. Il s'appelle Santiago Caicedo et puis il vient juste de terminer un film d'animation en Colombie. C'est lui qui est devenu le pionnier de film 3D et d'animation 3D en Colombie. C'est super sympa. Ah ouais, ok, d'accord. Okay. Ah bah... Uh, like we're uh, getting some reaction in Santiago, so I think we should get going here. Perfect. Hey, so good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first in our uh, SIGGRAPH Director's Q&A sessions. Uh, we're celebrating the Academy Awards that are right around the corner, as well as the fact that submissions are now open for the 2018 SIGGRAPH Computer Animation Festival, as well as many other programs. So uh, I recommend that you all jump on to siggraph.org slash submissions and check the different programs where you may be thinking about actually being one of the lucky directors next year when we start interviewing some of the great winners. Uh, I'm Larry Bafia. I'm the director for the Computer Animation Festival for 2018. That'll be right here in Vancouver, BC. So I'm here at the Center of Digital Media along with some of my uh, Masters of Digital Media students in the background, and I'm sure they'll have some questions later. Uh, while we're talking, uh, those of you out there in Facebook Live land, uh, start uh, you know, chatting up some of your questions as well, because we'll be getting to you shortly. I'd also like to introduce Santiago, who will be our French translator today, and Gabrielle, who is one of the six members of the team uh, that made the film at MOPA in Arles, France, uh, by the name of Garden Party. Garden Party, which went through a really, really interesting journey. Nine months worth of work. They submit it to last year's SIGGRAPH. It gets, a, gets accepted into the show, which is a really great thing in itself, then wins the award for best in show. Amazing, the student piece that not only gets into, into the electronic theater, but also makes it the best in show, wins best student project at SIGGRAPH Asia, and now, of all things, it's nominated for an Academy Award. So, Gabrielle, you must be really excited about the journey from this film. Gabrielle, tu dois être vraiment, vraiment super excité avec le succès de ce film. Bah oui, carrément, parce que ce n'était pas euh, prévu. Euh, à la base, c'est un film étudiant, donc nous, on voulait juste avoir un boulot euh, en sortie. And so, it's very interesting because he says at the very beginning, it's a very big surprise because it was not it was not foreseen, and because it was only a student project. So, all they wanted to do is to find a job as soon as they would graduate. <laughs> yeah, and uh, ça a été uh, une aventure qui a duré un an et demi maintenant déjà, wow. et uh, on a en... lasted 18 months already. And, uh, okay. Voilà, il y a eu uh, le SIGGRAPH, le VES, et maintenant les Oscars, donc uh, c'est super. So it was very interesting because it was first SIGGRAPH, then, then the VES, and now the Oscars, which is a big honor. Yes. Fantastic. So um, it must have been really interesting coming up with some of the ideas. Uh, it's, it's a very sort of quirky film. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, Uh, it, it's like the morning after a big garden party in a mansion, and uh, we meet these frogs and some insects and all. Uh, tell us a little bit about how uh, the film was designed and how you came up with the storyline. Uh, alors, pour l'histoire, uh, uh, nous, ce qui nous intéressait d'abord, c'était les animaux. Euh, on voulait euh, faire un film d'animation avec euh, des animaux parce que voilà, c'est des caractères qui sont euh, sans, sans dialogue. So, so for the history, for the story itself, they were very interested in the animals. And because the animals allow them to have a narration without necessarily any kind of dialogue. Voilà. Et euh, aussi, on voulait faire un film qui était euh, un tout petit peu pas juste pour enfants. Donc, on a voulu rajouter un petit côté polar avec cette thème de crime, euh, des indices et euh, et euh, voilà, avoir une petite réflexion euh, entre les humains et euh, les hommes, euh, voilà. So, at the beginning, they, they chose not to create an animation that was just going to be only for kids. It was going to be a, a little bit of a dark film on the dark side, and it was a reflection on, this, on the similarities between humans and animals. Hmm. Interesting. So, how far did you go with that idea? Did you get to the storyboard phase? Um, how did how did your team work to work out the story? 
Euh, nous, on, dans, dans l'équipe, on croit beaucoup euh, aux au storyboards, aux animatiques pour euh, se faire une idée euh, du film général. Euh, in donc, the a... team, we believe in a lot in the storyboard and the animatics to have a general idea of the finished product. So, du coup, on a essayé de, on a, on a eu jusqu'à 100 versions différentes du film. Ça a évolué tout au long de l'année, et on essayait de poser euh, une première version où il y avait déjà euh, des sons d'FX, où il y avait déjà euh, le montage euh, avec euh, voilà des dessins un petit peu brouillons, mais euh, ça nous permettait de nous projeter et euh, et, et, et ça de, de, c'était assez difficile de caler le rythme du film parce qu'on avait plusieurs histoires en même temps. Donc voilà. Wow. Um, they actually tried over 100 versions of the film. And this allowed them to have a general version and a, and, and a first version, finally, where they had a general approach of what the final look of the film was going to be, and especially dealing with the rhythm of the, um, of the entire uh, movie at the end. Uh, they, had, um, they, they were able to predict and, and, uh, and uh, project towards the future how is it that the film would evolve. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, that's really amazing, and it's definitely worth it because the film has a really, really nice flow. Um, let's talk a little bit about the look development because it's quite a challenge for a student team to take on a long piece like that and have a very photorealistic environment. I imagine there was a lot of development work there as well. Yeah. Um, L'idée, quand on fait un projet étudiant en particulier, bah, on, on doit se la technique rentre en jeu très rapidement parce qu'on n'a pas un budget limité, on n'a pas un nombre euh, d'artistes qui travaillent sur le projet limité. Donc, euh, on a essayé de centrer euh, nos enjeux euh, sur voilà ces grenouilles pour pouvoir euh, essayer de pousser au maximum euh, nos personnages principaux. principaux. Et, euh, et euh, on avait aussi... So what's happening is that in the idea, because it's a student project, you really don't have access to unlimited resources. You really have to focus on the actual result. And what they did is they foc focused on the character of the frog, which is one of the center um, characters of the movie. Et euh, on a pour les environnements, on, on s'est vachement amusé. On a essayé de faire de la photogrammétrie. Donc euh, c'est euh, vous devez sûrement savoir ce que c'est. C'est euh, construire un modèle 3D à partir de photos euh, et ça, ça nous a permis de rajouter une petite touche de réalisme dans le film. So this is extremely interesting. Pardon me for adding a little bit um, in the here, and I'm trying to be a little bit neutral, but this is fascinating because he says that for the environment, um, they use the technique called the photogrammetry, photogrammetry, mm -hmm. which is um, how to create a 3D environment using um, as the base a series of photos, of real-world photos. So it gave them the possibility of creating something very photorealistic. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a technique that's becoming very popular at our school as well. It's a, it's a great way to get a lot of your geometry going quickly. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so now you've, uh, the six of you have decided to create a company, right? Illogic? Yes, 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 yes. Euh, à la sortie de l'école, voilà, nous on avait eu une bonne alchimie sur le film de fin d'études, mais aussi pendant les cinq années parce qu'on était euh, amis, on a bossé sur beaucoup de projets ensemble. Et en sortant d'études, voilà, la question s'est posée qu'est-ce qu'on fait maintenant euh, On savait qu'on voulait continuer, donc on s'est euh, appelé Illogique. Euh, on a fait une sorte de collectif de directors et euh, on a pu euh, être euh, engagé par une boîte qui fait de la publicité. Euh, qui s'appelle Wiz Design, Wiz Design, et euh, depuis voilà, ça fait un an et demi qu'on travaille pour eux sur euh, des projets euh, de pub avec euh, globalement souvent des euh, animaux et du un style photoréaliste. So uh, when they were working, when they were at school, they became really good friends because they spent five years working together. They spent five years working together, and so when finally they graduated, they said, uh, what are what are they going to do? And they created their new company. Um, which is actually a collective of directors, and they see as a collective of directors. They were hired um, very soon by a company called Wiz Design, where they're doing advertising, and he's been working already for. They've been working already for Wiz Design for the last year and a half, where they're developing mostly animations based on animals. Mm -hmm. Will we will we be seeing any more submissions for the electronic theater in the future? 
Euh, yes, j'espère, j'espère. Euh, pour le moment, euh, euh, on, on a encore un peu, de, on a, on a plein de projets qu'on veut faire. Euh, ça va peut-être mettre un petit peu de temps à se mettre en place pour trouver les financements, pour trouver euh, euh, les moyens de, de réussir à, à faire nos, nos prochains projets. Euh, Je dirais pas pour tout de suite, mais dans une année, pourquoi pas. So he says that, yes, I hope, I hope we're going to be able to submit something. But right now, they're focusing on trying uh, a bunch of new projects. They need to focus now on finding the resources and the financing. And then, who knows, probably next year, they're going to be able to submit a new piece. Oh, quite understandable. I, I imagine it's, it's a very big transition to go from student filmmakers to entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, bah, ouais, ouais, c'était... Uh... Ça s'est fait progressivement. Euh, du coup, on a le temps un peu de s'y habituer. Au, au, au... Il y a plein d'étapes clés. Euh, la première réunion client, euh, le projet, premier projet professionnel terminé, euh, euh, le premier Skype avec euh, un, un pays qui est en Thaïlande. Euh, voilà, donc c'est plein de choses. Et petit à petit, on, on, on finit par retrouver ces petits. Et, euh, mais euh, c'est chouette, c'est chouette. So it's super interesting. It's been a very, a very good. Chouette means very nice in a very colloquial way. And, uh, and it's, it's been following a series of steps. First is uh, designing, uh, the, uh, getting in touch with the client and getting uh, uh, the, the information from the client, then creating the, the professional project um, proposal, and then Skyping, for example, with clients that are going to be in Thailand, so in the other part of the world, on the other side of the world. But it's been a very rewarding experience. Fantastic. I see we have a number of viewers out on Facebook Live. So if you have any questions for Gabrielle, please uh, do not hesitate because we'd like to get everybody in on this chat. Anybody in the room here have any questions for him now? Just like my classes, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got a laugh out of them for that one. Um, so um, as in, in any... Um, in any filmmaking venture, um, there's always some moments where things go wrong or you learn some lessons, things that you wouldn't want to repeat again. Do you have any advice for our audience out there, for our aspiring filmmakers? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I, I think the key uh, is not from me. I read that somewhere, but I forget. Oh, sorry, I'm speaking. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, the, the key is that uh, you have to do the mistake very quickly because, uh, of course, you will always make mistakes. Uh, and uh, the sooner you make them, uh, the better it is. So it was the approach we had in Garden Party. We tried to uh, um, quickly uh, start with the storyboard, quickly get the entire storyboard to see if there is uh, additional shots that you don't want and uh, stuff like that. And uh, also uh, trying to see that if you are good with runtime. time. So very early in the years, we started. We wanted to have a final shot uh, as a key visual to for references. Et, uh, et voilà, voilà. C'est make mistake fast. I I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I see we've got a, a couple of questions out there from the the audience. Perhaps we can bring up those questions. So, how is the French market for filmmakers and entrepreneurs these days? What's your experience been like so far? Uh, je, pour, pour, le, pour le moment, on a eu euh, plus de travail qu'on pouvait vraiment euh, faire. Euh, on a eu beaucoup de, pro, euh, de propositions pour du euh, commercials. Euh, on s'est on, on s'est pas encore frotté euh, pour la production de courts métrages ou de longs métrages donc ça, ça reste encore une une zone grise pour nous euh, mais je pense que globalement euh, le il y a du boulot dans l'animation dans l'image de synthèse euh, pour tous les camarades de promo qui sont sortis euh, ils ont tous trouvé du boulot assez rapidement donc euh, c'est je pense que on est dans un bon euh, une bonne lancée That's very interesting too because he now, he now says that they've been extremely busy in, with the job that they have been producing for advertising, especially in the in, in advertising in France. Um, they haven't been able to produce any kind of go, or go into the realm of short films or full features like full length features 
Um, but globally, um, there's a big market for animation and anything that is a, a 3D imaging. Um, and all his classmates so far have been able to find a job. So this is a very good moment in Europe for people who are doing 3D animation and uh, image de synthèse, which is um, a 3D imaging. It's great. So I imagine you've had to make some adjustments in the kind of pipeline that you created first for making your film as students where you have much more time. But when you're working in a service business with clients, um, not only do you have to come up with good ideas, but you have to turn them around quickly. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, so the main challenging part was when we were in a school, we were used to have uh, uh, so many different licenses because it was a student's license and uh, even the school uh, buys uh, a lot of different software. So you're getting used to have this looks, uh, all these different uh, software that you can use. And when you go to the real world, uh, you don't have that much. So it was a bit uh, uh, tricky part. And uh, yeah, what, what was the question? Oh, I was just curious about how you put your pipeline together as, you know, six directors. Do you use a lot oh, of freelancers? Yeah. Or? Uh, yeah, uh, it was, I think six is a good number or uh, less than 10 to work on a project because uh, it's very fast to communicate. Uh, as it's something that we really have to learn uh, to uh, work with a wider team. Uh, yeah, it's it's a part that uh, I'm I'm not really good at communication, so I, I had to learn the hard way. And uh, but I think it's going to be better in the future. I hope. Fantastic. I've got a question here from an MDM student right here in Vancouver. Hello. Hello. Uh, question is uh, here. We uh, are getting often uh, times new information from clients or just rethinking our ideas and. Uh, having to to pivot, and uh, I was just wondering if you could think of a time that you had to make a big pivot, and uh, I guess how you knew it was time to make that actual decision to go that route. Okay, I I, I may want a French traduction. Donc, yeah. savoir que dans quel moment tu as dû pivoter yeah. dans un dans une direction complètement différente um, en essayant de créer un, un un projet pour un client. Tu sais quand tu as un client qui qui te qui a des demandes spécifiques, qui a des demandes très particulières commerciales. Uh, quand est-ce que tu dois? Can we use also the term compromise in that sense? Yeah, it's a good question and uh, it, it's. Um, always very hard, uh, of course. Uh, I think the, the idea is uh, you have to, uh, you don't want to um, be in a situation that you don't believe on what you are doing, that you believe that you are doing is not good, but it pleases the client because it's going to, it's going to make a lot of problem along the way. So of course you, you have to be, uh, to listen and uh, sometimes, uh, uh, do proposition that uh, work uh, good for uh, uh, both of the client and, and you. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's okay is to stay flexible, to know what is really important and what don't, doesn't matter that much. Uh, but yet, yeah, it's true that client can be very difficult uh, to, 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 to deal with. That's true. I don't know how to take that question because I have to tell you that Mark is actually on the student team here that's building the launcher for the VR theater, so I'm one of his clients. So. Uh, <laughs> and you great. Right, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we have a, a few more questions. Can we bring up a couple of the questions from our audience? So, uh, from AJ Winter, as a student working on a short film with a team, what would you recommend in terms of getting the film done on time? Any organizational tips or ideas to give, keep people motivated? Uh, yeah, that's that's a great question. And uh, 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 I have to say that um, I, I may not be the best to answer that because I had uh, on my team, I, I've got people that were very organized, that helped a lot doing that. And I believe that is a very 
first things to do, uh, schedule uh, with deadline, because uh, it's so easy in uh, 3D to spend a lot of time um, on uh, details. And at the end, you have uh, 10 shots to do in one week. So the key, yes, is to um, very soon have a global schedule, I guess. And uh, as soon as you have uh, um, your shot, uh, make a new schedule with uh, each shot uh, and how many time you have. Uh, pour avoir vraiment quelque chose de homogène dans, dans la répartition du travail. Uh, in order to have something that's going to be very homogeneous when you are distributing the work the, and the, the tasks. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, very important, I guess. Fantastic. Let's bring up another question from our audience. Okay, from Anna Cecilia, what was the biggest challenge you faced during the making of the film? Um, I believe that the main challenge actually was the story uh, because uh, we really have uh, had an hard time to find the right balances between all the different uh, frog story and uh, with the crime scene on the background. So it was uh, the uh, until uh, very late in the years we were still doing a uh, 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 big changes, uh, big uh, uh, movement in the uh, edit. Uh, so I think it was the uh, hardest part. And also uh, in the technical sides, uh, all the shots that were not uh, like the others, like for example, uh, at the end, uh, uh, the dead body or stuff like that, uh, we had to spend uh, extra time doing uh, R&D for only one shot. So it was a bit uh, tricky. Uh, we cannot just uh, use the recipe we found for the other one. So yeah, the caviar was uh, also a bit hard to do. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so at, at MOPA, did you have a, a, a dedicated space, a studio space for everyone to work together? Did you work remotely? Um, how, how, did the, how did the process come together for making the film? Um, Basically, we were uh, um, 30 students, uh, no, 30, 40 students in the same room for one uh, year. And mm. uh, we almost uh, lived there. Uh, we, if there was always uh, one uh, student working uh, anytime uh, because we, we can go and uh, uh, whenever we want. And uh, it was a uh, very more, more and more the, the years uh, advanced, we were, uh, we go out less and less. And uh, at the end, it was like uh, um, a cavern, uh, in cavern, uh, where in we were. Cave. In a cave. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was like... right. Fantastic. Um, let's bring up another uh, audience question, please. I think we have another one there. There we go. From Alex, uh, what part of the SIGGRAPH con conference has made the greatest impact? Um, well, I'm not sure I understand the question well, so, but... Uh, did uh, you have a, you had a chance to, uh, to visit the yeah. conference last yeah, year yeah. When, when you were a guest, right? Uh, what, yeah. what was impressive for you at the conference? I, I think uh, I'm, I'm very glad that we live in a world that uh, uh, software keep getting better and better. And it's always amazing when you are at SIGGRAPH to see all the uh, uh, technical evolution. And uh, there is so many that I, I, I could not choose one, but uh, it's always fun to uh, uh, work on the different uh, stand. And uh, you know that you're going to see some uh, technology uh, showcase there in uh, two years or three years in your uh, uh, software like Maya. And it's always fun. I, I, uh, maybe something that stand out, it was at uh, SIGGRAPH ASIA. They got um, something like, it was not a scanning machine like photogrammetry, but for the shaders, it was uh, able to uh, uh, capture the shader of the materials, if it's plastic, metal. And uh, I, I thought that, wow, that's even better, better than uh, just getting the topology. So I wish to to be able to play with uh, something like that uh, in the future. 
That, that's always one of the amazing things about the SIGGRAPH conference. Uh, you never know what innovations or what techniques uh, that you can bring back to your own work. Um, mm -hmm. So speaking of your own work, um, let's, let's talk about, do you have a particular style that you would like to work in as a director? I know you're in a studio that's focusing on uh, certain commercial work, but I'm sure as an auteur, you have some ideas as well. Yeah, yeah, we um, we stay flexible and uh, see what kind of project is uh, the more doable. But uh, I think that we we would like to keep working. Uh, what we did with Garden Party uh, can be uh, done with different kind of animals, a different story uh, in a different environment, and uh, we do have uh, some projects in mind. Uh, with penguin, uh, birds, and stuff like that, and uh, that we wish to 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 do in the future, and always keep the voiceless uh, part is a, a challenge because uh, there is not a lot of um, audience for voiceless. Uh, often, it's uh, producer wants your animal to talk, but we are trying to keep that uh, style. But uh, who know? Fantastic. So it uh, looks like we've got another question from the audience here. All right, from Florian, because you were six co-directors, how did you decide when you aren't all agreeing? Do you have time to try different options? Uh, okay, so uh, hello, Florian. Um, yeah, Florian saying good luck with that question. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, yeah, uh, it was... Uh, it, it, it could have been very hard, but what we try to do is to stay uh, very close all the time uh, on the project and where it uh, go. So there is no a big fork, like people thinking about something very different from the other. Uh, we try to move all together uh, on the story, uh, do uh, um, dailies uh, often. And uh, this way that when we were not agreeing on something, it was always uh, details and not uh, something that was very important. And furthermore, we try to don't uh, have too much uh, emotion uh, on the project and to stay a little bit uh, outside uh, with our feeling. And also something that helped a lot uh, is to show the, the uh, animatic to people like Florian. Uh, we can uh, give uh, uh, feedbacks and uh, it's helped a lot to uh, decide uh, what uh, we do if we are not agree on something and uh, it uh, was to ask uh, other people for feedbacks. Fantastic. Okay, we have time for one more question from the audience, so let's bring that one up. It says, what lessons have you and your team learned from Garden Party? <laughs> Hmm. That's from nice. that's from the international resources from SIGGRAPH. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, I think there is many things that we learn uh, technically and also uh, how to do a project. Uh, maybe something that uh, I have in mind right now is that uh, you could be very surprised uh, if you work hard on a project uh, where it's. Uh, how far I can go. Uh, it's like, um, I think that we we didn't even think that it was possible. And uh, so that's something that we discover. Uh, uh, yeah. Fantastic. So Gabrielle, I'd like to thank you so much for your time today. I, I imagine there are all sorts of people tugging at you in Los Angeles for your time. Uh, we wish you the best of luck on Sunday at the awards. We're all pulling yeah, for you. We're going to be watching. Yes. Thanks very much. Congratulations once again on Garden Party, a fantastic film. Santiago, thank I'd like to thank you for your time as well. Thank you on all of the translation. Uh, I'd also like to, a couple of SIGGRAPH housekeeping notes. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll be speaking with Gabriel Osorio from Bear Story, uh, which won the Oscar in 2016. So there's a legacy there. Hopefully it works for Garden Party as well. And then on Thursday at 2.30 Pacific time, we'll also be speaking with Patrick Osborne. And he was uh, the filmmaker that made the 360 film Pearl. So I hope you can all tune in for that. Be sure and check in at siggraph.org slash submissions 
and check out all of the programs where you can also be a filmmaker in our conference right here in Vancouver next August. Thank you, everyone. We really Thanks. appreciate your time. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Bye.